Over the course of my career, I've had many opportunities to attend various professional retreats and seminars and uh, you know, different gatherings, board meetings and the like. And it's not uncommon that when we all get together, no matter how old and stuffy the room may be, that they try to get us to start talking and getting to know each other a little bit. And so they have us play different icebreaker games. I'll be honest, I've never enjoyed them. But I'll never forget one particular retreat where I was without question the youngest person there. And they had us uh, make up what would be our superpower if we could have one. If we could have just one superpower, what would be my superpower? And we had to walk around everybody in the room and tell them what our superpower you know, would be and hopefully start some conversation that way. <clears throat> I don't remember what I said. It was probably something that I thought was really witty and funny and that my kids would tell me was not. Um, but in any event, uh, it does get you thinking. And in fact, we live in a society today where we love to think about various superpowers and what it would be like to fly or to run fast or go from one place to the next and, and so on. And I, I say that as a big fan myself, right? The Marvel movie franchise is without question the most popular uh, and successful movie franchise in all of, of cinema history. But it causes us all to pause and to think a little bit. What is our superpower as Christians? What is it about being Christian that makes us unique and special and different and powerful? Well, St. Paul answers that question today in the epistle. He says, when I am weak, I am strong. Our power as Christians comes precisely from our own weakness. From those times when we acknowledge that we are not super powerful, when we are not capable of doing whatever it is that is in front of us. It's in those moments that we actually find our power. Because it's in those moments when we kneel down, when we say to Christ, I can't. I don't have the power. I'm not able to do it. That we hear from Christ the response that he gave to St. Paul. My grace is sufficient for you. And my strength is made perfect in weakness. It's precisely in those moments when we acknowledge our weakness that Christ's power then begins to work in us. But that's something that, quite frankly, takes work. It takes practice, right? Because most of us, I suspect, I know for myself, I go throughout so much of my day just thinking, I can do whatever it is that's in front of me, and I just do it, right? And then what happens is we get confronted with the difficult moments, the hard tasks, and we're not in the practice of getting down on our knees and saying, Lord, I need your strength. I need you to do it, because I can't. One of the, the most meaningful things for me is at the very beginning of the services, usually before just about anybody's here, the clergy come out and they have a small little service called Keros, before we begin the liturgy or the orthros. And Father and I come out and pray and say a few prayers. We venerate the icons. And Father will actually say a prayer that says, Lord, strengthen me for the service that I am about to perform. Right? Before anything else, Lord, strengthen me. Give me your grace to be able to do what we are about to do. There's a wonderful couple of saints who we actually celebrate today that are not very well known that perfectly exemplify this. They're St. Spiridon and St. Nicodemus, the Prospera bakers of the Kiev caves. All right. You may have seen a little icon of them out by the candles when you came in. If you didn't get a chance, I encourage you to venerate their icon on the way out of the church. But these two monks lived in the most famous monastery uh, in Ukraine, the Kiev Caves. 
They were uneducated, probably illiterate. They had no standing at all in the monastery. Their job was to bake the bread and especially the prosphora for the liturgy. Okay? And that's it. Chopping the wood, kneading the dough, baking the bread, delivering the bread up to the church, rinse and repeat over and over for decades. And that was all they did. But they did it with humility and with love and with prayer, asking God to strengthen them in the work that they were doing, humble as it was. And he began to work miracles through them. Just as they were going along throughout their day, baking their bread, these little things would happen. One day the fire started pouring out of the stove, out of the oven. And one of, the, one of them, I don't know whether it was St. Spiridon or St. Nicodemus, takes his cloak off and just puts it over the stove and says, don't go anywhere. <laughs> and he runs out and he takes his cassock full of holes and fills it with water and comes over and says, here, take off the cloak now. They take the cloak off the oven. He dumps the water out of his holy, you know, filled with holes, tattered cassock, having not lost a single drop on the way over, and the fire goes out. And he just goes right back to work like nothing has happened. Right? He was so used to putting his faith in Christ and knowing that Christ would work in him in his moments of weakness, like when he accidentally sets the entire kitchen on fire, that that's exactly what happened. Christ worked through him, and he goes right back to what he was doing. Brothers and sisters, in those moments in our life when we are weak and when we are powerless, when we feel like there is nothing that we can possibly do, we are called to fall down on our knees and have the simple faith of those prospera bakers to ask Christ to work in us, to make us strong, to let his strength work through us. And we will find that strength. We will be able to do whatever it is in front of us, and we will begin to see Christ begin to work miracles through our weakness. May we have the prayers of St. Spiridon and St. Nicodemus in our effort every day. Amen. <laughs>